Welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. This is what it looks like in the morning, and this is on purpose. <laughs> no hat to cover it. No scrunchie to put it back. Let's talk. Are you rogue for this day and age? Are you living the life and doing the things that you want to do when you want to do them? This is a big discussion that I think particularly us ladies need to have. Let me tell you something. Me sitting here right now with dirty hair, well, it's not that dirty. I mean, if you asked somebody 200 years ago if my hair was dirty, they would not have thought that my hair was dirty. It may have not been proper for me to sit like this necessarily with you either. But I haven't washed my hair since the night before last, so I need to wash my hair tonight. I'm holding off because I just wanted to jump in the shower and jump out because I've got to make a brisket and I'm making jelly today. And I'm homeschooling my boys. We have got to have individuals that are setting the example of a true social pushback in terms of what is real. Now, some of these things that I'm going to say are going to frighten some people. <laughs> I was told on my canning video, I made my video that was called No-No when I was just so disgusted by finding that I had false seals. You know, you have those false seals on your lids. Have you seen that video? It's exploded. Somebody told me that I was scaring them. Ma'am, I am so sorry I scared you. I'm 5'4", 130 pounds. It would take a lot for me to scare you. Okay, I think I could pull it off if I really tried, but my goal is to not scare you. My goal is to, to really talk openly and truthfully. And sometimes people, I think in this day and age, don't know how to take that. You might get a little bit of satire in, my, in, in some of the things that I say. Some people don't know the definition of satire, which puts a burden back on me to have to explain it and to post the definition of what is satire in my Stop Copying Me video. I've been asked to talk about preparedness. I've been asked to talk about history. I've been asked to talk about genealogy and to intertwine all of these things with my journey, with our journey. I am on a very unique journey. And I am absolutely finding out that parts of me that I thought were, uh, you, you think you're this way for so long, and you find out that you've repressed certain things for forever. You think that you come from this, and you find out you actually come from that. And the most liberating thing that I think I've done in recent years, number one, starting to grow my own food. Man, I, I, I don't feel like a rebel anymore because it's just become what we do. I'm trying to really push on that back again this year since James is doing really well. Thank you for your prayers. I felt, I'm gonna tell you, that was my first surge of pushback because I was a total, total, total freak in my neighborhood and to some people in my family to some, from some of my friends, it was like, oh my gosh, what is going on? What is she doing? Did she grow that? Did you grow that? You, you grew that tomato? No, you didn't. You got it at Kroger. Oh my God. No, you didn't. You're lying. Shut up. No, I really did it. You're going to start experiencing these things. And some of it is going to be a little insulting. And some of it's going to feel really, really good. The next thing that was probably some of the most rebellious, the, the, the biggest and best dose of reality and, and a sense of rebellion and being who I am was taking Krav Maga. Being dragged around, kicked, punched, having my face fractured. Um, sweating it out for several, several years in a dojo, going up against men that were six foot four. Now, granted, obviously, if they really wanted to beat me down to a pulp, he could have done it. Yes, let's not be stupid here. But learning to go up against things, 
because women are not taught this. We are not taught to fight. We are not, we're taught to be petty, but we're not taught to stand at least in this day and age. And you are doing a disservice to yourself and you are doing a disservice to your daughter and granddaughter if you are not teaching them to learn and to motivate them to learn self-defense skills in however which way you want to skin that cat, okay? Whether it's with a bow and arrow, whether it, why do you think the Hunger Games did so, why do you think every girl in the world wanted to be Katniss? Because we want our inner Katniss to come out but we've been told that may not be proper. But it's fundamental for survival. I do not believe my great-great-grandmother that lived for three years alone with children over right across that mountain ridge while her husband and brothers were off to fight a war that they didn't want to participate in. I don't think that she sat real meek and just stirred beans all day. Think about that for a minute. Mamma could probably teach you something if she if she was standing here today, I guarantee you. Mamma Robertson could probably teach us all a little something something. The next thing that um, probably has really motivated me in terms of being what I'm developing into, uh, well, I despise makeup. I hate it. Do I use it to a certain degree? Yeah, I, I think little bits of it here and there make me look a little bit more enhanced, feel a little bit better. But the more we do all of these things, the more I just, this is who I am. I don't color my hair. I don't cut my hair. I don't get manicures. I don't wear makeup other than a little bit of lip gloss, maybe a little bit of a sheer thing you see, and I might do a little something, something right here. I have zero interest. Now I want to be clean, I want to be this or that, you know, all and presentable and fit and healthy. That's totally different. Because I realized I am, I am painting all this crap on my face because that's what we're told we have to do. If you like makeup and you like painting your barn, wear the makeup. I don't. It's not who I am at least on not on most days. <laughs> if I do a photo shoot and you see makeup, don't hold me accountable because there are moments for business reasons or things like that. But at the same time, I can assure you that within a very short time period, my face is going to be itching off. My eyes might start swelling. I might say a curse word and I'm going to be finding Noxzema if that's all I have to remove that stuff off of my face. It's not who I am. Another thing that I have found extremely crucial in terms of developing who are we becoming or who I am is hard work and I'm not doing near what our ancestors did. I'm going to tell you what, if you take a whole day to put that phone down and you go out there and you say, I'm just going to work all day. Folks, that is one day in an entire lifetime of our grandmothers. Push mow the yard, rake all the leaves, feed all the animals, change all the waters, chop the wood. Go chop that wood. Even if you only chop three pieces, go feel what that felt like. Come in, wash up, tend the baby. Do some laundry. Even if it is with the washing machine, you're still doing it. Make the biscuits. You're not going to enjoy your magical cup of mandarin orange tea if you don't have hot water. You got to go build that fire, baby doll, and tend to fire. And it better not be wet wood that you just gathered yesterday. In order to build the fire, just to make the warm hot water to have some tea. That's humbleness right there. The next thing that I am discovering to help me big time, which is bringing all of this together, is homeschooling my children and watching them develop into what they are. I had a lady yesterday say to me, I'm not sure about homeschooling because my brother who is a teacher is was telling me that they are not going to develop, that won't have proper development. <laughs> do people actually still believe that stuff? No offense, babe. I love you. Okay. I, I, I do. You need me to talk to you like this. Do you really believe that? We're going to be 2018. 
Do you honestly believe that children that are home, at home with their parents or grandparents or uh, and are have had their, their curriculum specifically picked out for them that suits them, if they are doing their homework 180 days, which I do think is a good timeline, um, that are going on field trips when and where and how they need to, are making bread and gathering eggs from the chickens and doing all kind chopping wood and cutting down trees and doing all of these things, seed saving. My kid, my, we're about to, we're seed saving. You don't think that my, uh, practicing piano, taking piano lessons, and we're doing all of this according to our timeline for our family, our needs, our health, our schedule, our farm, and there's no proper development in that? Please think that through. The last and final thing that I'm experiencing, and I'm not trying to just keep bringing this up, but it is you are seeing evolution in a sense, and you can experience this evolution too, is diving into your genealogy. I don't mean just go and pay $25 and find out something or spit in something and send it off. <laughs> That's all good too. I done, been there, done it. But you got to go and put yourself there as much as you can. Even if it's just your grandmother that you did know. There's things and places she went and things that she did that you may not know about. Get in the car. No, you don't have to go to Nayland Stadium on Saturday. How about instead of us going to a football game in Nayland Stadium, which there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. You gotta, have a, you gotta live and have a little fun. Let's go that way. That's North Carolina right there. And my family is from right there. And that's where they stayed. And that's where they lived. And that's where they bought land. And that's where they intermingled with the Cherokee. And hid Cherokee before the Trail of Tears. They are right there. Can you imagine the time? Can you imagine the... We don't know social pressure. We don't know war. And we don't know hard times like that. We don't. Not many of us do. And we can go and imagine. And the cabin was here, and all they had was this creek. And why was this area called X with the name Bear in it? Because there's Bear. And this is unknown territory. And she lived here how long by herself while he went off to a war that he didn't want to fight? And she had children? There's no, there's no replacing that. We have to stop doing things because of what we are continually told to do. Now, I'm not talking about doing things unlawfully. That is not what I'm saying here. Okay, so don't take me out of context. But what I'm saying is, do you really want to put that stuff in your hair? Now, if you have to do certain things to make an income and a job, I get that. I'm not slamming you. Doing things, in a sense, because you're trying to get by and to survive is not the same as just doing things because that's the only thing you know to do and because you really hate it. But, oh my gosh, I have to do it because I've done it that way for 25 years. If you want to get into this lifestyle, understanding and having the confidence to be what you are, to be who you are, and to think with the brain that God and Granny gave you is the most li y y y All of this has to come together. Just because you see somebody on YouTube with quail does not mean you need to go get quail. And just because somebody like me tells you that they're overall, depending on the situation, can be a waste of time, does not mean you need to be offended by that. They don't work here. That doesn't mean it won't work for you. you got to find out what works for you and be willing to find out what works for you. There's a lot of different things you're going to find on your journey, but you have to have the guts to find it. That is exactly what your granny would have told you. I don't come from a line of very submissive crowd following women <laughs> thank God for that we don't agree on things like right now my mother wants to grab my face and put some 
red lipstick on it, don't you, Mama? <laughs> but my mother would tell me growing up, if I had problems at school or things like that, she's like, I'm not coming to school to fix that for you. You, you got to fix a lot. You got to learn to fix, stand up for yourself, and you got to fix things for yourself. And when that bully, that, that bully got on the bus, and I was a scared sixth grader, and was doing some really nasty things to me on the school bus, and I came home crying that day. My dad threw his fork down onto the dinner plate and said, get outside. And I said, what? He said, get outside. I said, okay, because I did, I mean, I did what I was told. He said, I'm gonna teach you how to fight. I'm gonna teach, let me tell you something. I'm like, I can't, I'm gonna get sent to the principal's office. Uh, I'm gonna get in trouble. I'm gonna get kicked off the butt, Dad. Let me explain something to you. The next time she says something to you or puts her finger on you, if you don't break her nose, I'm gonna ground you for a month. You will have to deal with me. She will be the least of your worries. I will handle anything that I need to handle beyond that, but this is how you're gonna do it. So, that hard reality at 12 years old, set forth the tone going forth. You must be who you are. You must stand up for who you are. You must push and reject away and question those that possibly push down, thumb down, all of those things. And when you know what's best for you and your family, even though it is a total pushback to society, friends, and maybe even some family, in a peaceful manner, you need to go do what you need to do because that is how you survive and that, that's what Granny did. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. I hope it helps you. We'll talk more about certain specific items in terms of self-reliance, preparedness, homesteading, all of these things. But I know that a lot of these gals out here need a little bit more of a reassurance and a confidence push. And I come out of the gate strong. I know that. I'm very well aware of that. And I know at times that puts um, pressure in terms of my forums. But I, but I know for a fact now that I have to be who I am. And my forums have to be what they are. And I'm going to speak in the tones in which I do because that is who I am. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Let's get to work.